Welcome to the Grim Leftovers Show with Grimnir every Monday night at 7 p.m. Eastern on reallibertymedia.com and rlmradio.xyz. All right, folks, time for another episode of Grim Leftovers right here on reallibertymedia.com. It is Monday. May 27, 2019. Some people call this Memorial Day. So, uh, happy Memorial Day to those of you that call it Memorial Day. I am Grimner, your host here on this program. And I uh, have a bunch of good stories lined up for you. Not really fresh stories, but that's what the show's all about. Stories that are left over from uh, the Freakers Ball Show. That uh, were planned for the Freakers Ball Show, but I never got to on that particular day. So, welcome to everybody out there, whoever may be out there tuning in on uh, this night from various places where the audio stream goes out to, and it does go out to a lot of places. Uh, let me say hi and howdy to those over there on freedomsnetwork.com. Glad to have you with us. RealLiberty.org, also good to have you here with us this evening. And uh, all the people on rlmradio.xyz, reallibertymedia.com, tunein.com, internetradio.com, and wherever else the stream may be being carried. So uh, glad to have you here with us tonight. Uh, I think I mentioned that already. Anyway, so uh, let me say hi and howdy to all the folks over here in the RLM chat. Uh, this is the Pound Pound Real Liberty Media on irc.freenode.net. We always have a great group of folks over here in the chat. Myself and the barman, of course. Miss Moose Girl just joining us after a long weekend over to the music festival up there in Minnesota at Harmony Park. Welcome back. I'm sure you had a wonderful time. We'll talk about that later. We got DC and Asimo and Beth Z and Chel Sedoni, Mr. Free Enslaved, Miss Gramsci, I, B, Don, C., the Java Doctor, Ponder Gander, uh, Miss Kate, of course, said Rob Works, firing up the mighty bubla, passing it around for all of us to enjoy. Uh, we have Mr. Trust No One, a.k.a. Romes. We got the Vanna White Pot. We got Vinny Tawaris, whatever that is. We got <laughs> we got the Weather Dork. Uh, we got Phantom and Beetle and Cyborg Noodle and Dakota and Frumpy and Huh? <laughs> Huh? Yeah, that's the guy's name. We got JJ's uh, from uh, Webcom Radio. We got Kiss times two. We, have, we got a Mr. Sock Puppet and a Smart Ass Bot. And uh, finally, a fake Vanna White Bot there. Vanna Whitey. All joining us in the chat this evening. And then all those that are out there in other places. Uh, maybe not joining us tonight. I, I don't know. Let me put a little down message here in the chat. Just so everybody knows that we are live, we're on air, we're here, we're talking, we're with you, we're with you. Oh, I should take, I forgot to take off the Spreaker thing on the uh, the now message there. You can't tune in on Spreaker live anymore because I've set that to private so it doesn't automatically post after I'm done with the show until I'm done with my editing, which takes a little while. So uh, yeah, and I, I don't want it to automatically post up to iHeart before I'm done. So anyway, uh, hopefully you're all ready for some old news, because that's what we got. Some old news. <laughs> this first article, I would say only affects you if you do fly commercial aircraft. However, knowing uh, the TSA and what they do, it probably will also affect people on trains and buses and other places that are not even travel related. But here it is, from Quartz, or QZ.com, uh, on April 17, 2019. The United States wants to scan the faces of all air passengers leaving the country. And that's, that's just the beginning. You can be sure it will go out to a much wider range than just that. The United States immigration system was designed to track who comes into the country, not who leaves it. For more than 20 years, authorities have been trying to find an effective way 
to track you down. Oh, keep tabs on departing foreigners, it says, but, you know, like I said. And those who overstay their visas. U.S. Customs and Border Protection, the CPB, which I guess is different than ICE somehow. I, I, they have so many groups and organizations and agencies that who the hell can even keep track of them? Anyway, they say it's found a solution. Facial recognition. Yeah, they want to give you a facial. <laughs> Not something you want. <laughs> it expects to be able to scan 97% of commercial passengers within the next four years, according to a report released by the Department of Homeland in security. Here's how the system, uh, they are saying how it works anyway. Passengers approach cameras installed at airport gates to have their pictures taken before boarding the plane. Those images are then used to identify the passenger using photos from visa and passport applications or custom screenings upon entering the U.S. If a picture matches information on file, the system creates an exit record. If it doesn't, the CBP officials look into it. Like, hey, you overstayed your visa and you're not coming back. Or we're going to throw you in Gitmo or something nasty like that. By last fall, cameras were screening passengers at 15 different U.S. airports. The system tested on more than 15,000 flights, identified 7,000 travelers who overstayed their visas. According to the agency, CBP calculates that the 666,582 passengers who arrived by plane or boat overstayed their visas in fiscal 2018. For the past few years, overstayers have represented a bigger share of undocumented immigrants than those who entered the country illegally. Illegally. Whichever. Legally, illegally. None of it matters to me. Critics say the CBP use of artificial intelligence is an invasion to privacy. Quite rightfully so, they say that. They worry about how the information could be used Oh, in the most nefarious ways you can imagine. CBP says the images are encrypted and that it only keeps them for a brief period of time. And lying liars lie. Uh, The camera setup eventually could replace the current system, which relies on departing airline flight manifests. Of course, the new system does not help with tracking who leaves by land. Yet, Canada <laughs> Canada shares information of who comes in from the U.S. with the CBP. When it comes to departure through Mexico, officials often only become aware someone left the U.S. when that person tries to come back in. The majority of those travelers are frequent border crossers, and CBP is able to close a previous arrival, uh, arrival when recording a new arrival. Loop-de-loop. Yeah. So uh, that could change. Oh, that will change. Uh, Could change, yeah. CBP says it's starting to test facial recognition to identify people driving through a land border crossing in southern Texas. And yes, that will expand. That definitely will expand to much, much wider array of folk. And also on this story, same story, I came across this post on activistpost.com, which was posted on April 23rd. It should be illegal. Use of facial recognition at airports draws anger. Yeah, well, rightfully so. A boarding technology for travelers using JetBlue is causing controversy due to social media thread on the airline's use of facial recognition. Last week, traveler Mackenzie Feagan 
described her experience with the biometric technology in a social media post that got attention of JetBlue's official Twitter account. She says, I just boarded an international JetBlue flight. Instead of scanning my boarding pass or handing over my passport, I look into a camera before being allowed to uh, allowed down the jet bridge. Did facial recognition replace boarding passes? Unbeknownst to me, did I consent to this? No, you don't have to consent. They don't care about your consent. Your consent means absolutely zero to them. Less than zero. In the exchange, which went viral, Fegan expressed her concern over the lack of communication from the airline. Yeah, it's really got nothing to do with the airline, however. Uh, it's, it's got to do with, with the TSA and the overall government, the CBP, whoever, whatever other crazy-ass agencies they have. Uh, instead of scanning my boarding pass or handing it over to my passport, how do you read that? Uh, well, oh, oh, it's just in there twice. Okay. Um, you're able, <laughs> so they say, to opt out of this procedure, McK uh, Mackenzie Jet said Jet Blue's account. Right. You're able to opt out of it, but then expect to get deeply probed and detained. Sorry if this made you feel uncomfortable, but we're into screwing people over, so get used to it. The airline rolled out the new technology at airports in Boston, Atlanta, New York, and Washington District of Criminals in April of 2017 and officially implemented facial recognition uh, boarding in November at JFK, New York's JFK, in November of 2018. JetBlue is relying on help from the CBP and the Department of Homeland Security. As Sean Farrell, the portfolio director, portfolio director, what kind of title is that? For government solutions at the SITA. What is that, SITA? I don't even recognize that one. Uh, the company running the technology explained in 2017, we're basically capturing that picture at the boarding gate, providing it to the U.S. Customs and Border Protection, and they are identifying the traveler. It's actually the United States government that's implementing the biometric matching system that does all of the hard analysis and crunching of the data. Biometric data functioning as a boarding pass is a technology being rolled out around the world in the new world order at airports in Europe and Asia and expanding in America. Yeah, wow, China airport face recognition systems help you to check your flight status. Yeah, like that's the best way to do that. And find the way to your gate. Note, I did not put input anything. It accurately identified my full flight information from my face. That according to Matthew Brennan on Twitter. The improvement to security is what they're calling it. Oh, the boogeyman will get me if I don't let them facial scan me. Uh, and the passenger experience are tremendously positive. According to the SITA, government agency we never heard of before, uh, the company's president for Europe. It explains the government's growing interest in this solution from both the airlines and airports in Europe and around the world. Cade Crockford, director of the ACLU of Massachusetts, uh, Technology for Te Massachusetts Technology for Liberty program. Really? Okay said that the use of biometric data technology for boarding passes was a misuse of a very powerful tool. I don't know if any of y'all ever seen the TV program. It was on a few years back uh, called Person of Interest. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just, just uh, if, you're, if you're familiar with that program, just put it in the context into what's going on here. Yeah. Honestly, using face surveillance 
in place of tickets and in the boarding process is like flooding your entire block to water your garden. It might accomplish the goal, but it hurts you and everyone else in the process and of course ruins your garden. It's so overboard it should be illegal, literally. But uh, yeah, who's gonna make it illegal? The ones making it legal are the ones that should have been making it illegal. <laughs> oh, lovely. Oh, exactly, Rome's, Rome's in the chat here says, wait until urinals start IDing people based upon their penis. <laughs> yeah, that's probably not far off. <laughs> I don't or, or or maybe not your penis, just the urine. They'll, they'll go know, know you by your urine, the, by the, your DNA. Uh, it, it's it's disturbing. It is disturbing for me right now. As far as I know, um, since I don't fly, it's not a problem for me. And if I did fly, I probably wouldn't be flying internationally. Uh, so anyway, as they're stating these things, should not affect me. I, I don't know who all flies internationally. I have a good friend, and her and her husband just got back from a trip to Europe. Um, so they would be affected, or probably were affected, uh, by this particular issue. But uh, what are we going to do? What, what, what can we do? I, I don't know. Stop flying. That's my, my personal advice. Stop flying altogether. Yeah, be that as it may. Next. <laughs> Coin to, Cointelegraph.com, April 23rd. IMF spring meetings. Digital money is imminent. But no decentralization in sight. Of course not. They're not only not interested in decentralization, they're also not interested in limited supply, as a blockchain would provide for. Th that, that is not part of their interest in any way whatsoever. They are only in, interested in control. The custodians of the global financial order have been prominent in crypto news recently. The weekend kicked off with the announcement of International Monetary Fund, the IMF, joining forces with the World Bank to launch a private blockchain coupled with quasi-cryptocurrency for trading purposes, for training purposes. <laughs> then continued with the spring meetings of the two organizations' boards of governors in Washington, D.C. Although it would be an overstatement to claim that the distributed ledgers were particularly conspicuous on the forum's overall agenda, the program included a series of fintech workshops, uh, financial technology fintech workshops, as well as at least a couple of major talks relevant to grasping where global regulators, which is, they want to regulate. Yes, they do want to regulate, uh, and they will regulate. Uh, the global regulators stand on some issues pertinent to crypto and blockchain applications. Situated in the context of the IMF's previous statements and actions, the ideas expressed at the meeting can update our understanding of intellectual currents that shape how international financial institutions envision the future of controlling your blockchain technology. Wait, let's go back a second here to the chat and see what we got here. Uh, Rome says his daughter was flying to North Carolina and he talked her into taking a train instead. Good move. And uh, Kate says it does not affect airline sales at all. Right. The few of us that boycott our air travel. Yeah, yeah I'm sure it doesn't really uh, affect the uh, airline ticket sales, but uh, it affects me because I don't do it. And if you decide not to do it, it will affect you as well. Um, anyway, <laughs> Christine Lagarde, the IMF's managing director, 
she looks like a man, by the way. I don't know if you're, uh, you're familiar with Christine Lagarde, but she definitely looks like a man. She'll look like a man. <laughs> anyway, uh, moderated the seminar entitled Money and Payments in the Digital Age. That featured Benoit, some name I can't pronounce, some French name, uh, a board member from of the European Central Bank, ECB, Central Bank of Kenya Governor Patrick, some other name I can't pronounce, J.P. Morgan Chase Chief Financial Officer Sarah Youngwood and Jeremy Allaire, co-founder and CEO of crypto finance firm Circle. Predictably, speakers who represented established financial institutions and the fintech entrepreneur offered vastly different opinions on whether digital payments model is superior. And of course, for them, their tech is superior. Not for you or I, but for them, the banker's control of the world, yes, far superior because they can continue to control everything. While J.P. Morgan's Chase's Youngwood touted the bank's new digital coin that is used for instantaneous settlement of wholesale payments, the Central Bank of Kenya's chief talked about mobile-based payment service, M-PESA, P-E-S-A, and the ECB's Koyar, whatever his name is, introduced TIPS, T-I-P-S, a cost-efficient European service for the settlement of instant payments. Allaire, on his part, painted a future marked by a fundamental redesign of how civic societies work. I'm not sure exactly what a civic society is, and I probably don't want to know. In which economic activity is fully automated, effectively eliminating the notion of payments as we now think of them. Now, pause for a second here and tie this back into the previous two stories about the facial recognition replacing your boarding passes and passports on boarding flights. Do you not think that facial recognition uh, to implement payment systems is going to go that way as well if these guys, and they will, have their way. Yeah, you just walk up to something, your face is shown there, and your payments are automatic. That's how that's going to go. Anyway, um, I don't really need to cover any more about this. Uh, just understand that they want to continue to control, control all financial transactions everywhere at all times, and they are going to do it, and they will also they are already also, I should say, uh, slandering the, the regular cryptocurrencies, the decentralized cryptocurrencies, the open source cryptocurrencies, because do you think their cryptocurrencies are going to be open source? I can guarantee you they're not. Anyway, there's a whole bunch of other information in there, details and such. On, on what their plans are. And, uh, yeah, it's not good. Uh, from my point of view, it's not good. Maybe you like this. Maybe you like getting your face scanned aboard an airplane and have your face scanned uh, to, to make a, a payment for whatever, a pack of gum or uh, your entire grocery shopping list or a new car or whatever the hell. Uh, maybe you, Maybe you enjoy that idea. But maybe it won't go so well for them. Maybe it won't. I'm thinking it probably won't. I'm thinking it'll be more glitches than they can handle. Of course, those glitches may affect you more than them. As you walk up to one of these places and your face looks like somebody else's face. And maybe that other person's not really a, the best person in the world and has done some bad things. And your face matches that person's face. What do you think's going to happen? <laughs> Kate, Kate, Kate says the uh, 
the uh, the self checkout at Target is a high resolution camera LED display with yourself looking back at yourself. Kind of creepy, uh, very creepy. But maybe this will be more more what they wind up with here from the New York Post. This an older story, August fourth, twenty seventeen. China destroys sassy bots after they bash communism. <laughs> yeah, China. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> sassy bots. You sassy. You sassy bot. <laughs> A pair of sassy Chinese robots were destroyed after they went rogue by bashing the Communist Party in a messaging app According to a report Friday, the chatbots named Baby Q and Zio Bing were created to have a fun text message style conversation with humans via the popular app QQ, which I'm not familiar with QQ. It must be a Chinese thing. I don't know. Uh, but when a woman asked Baby Q, do you love the Communist Party? The red scared, red scared robot fired back, no. According to a, a screenshot posted online, do you think such a corrupt and incapable politics can last a long time? The robot raged. That was the robot's response. After a second user tapped out the message, long live the communist party, but asked its, thought on, its thoughts on democracy, which I don't know who's training these bots, but the bot said, Democracy is a must, which may be better than communism. I, 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 either way, it, it all comes down to the same thing in the end, whether it's communism or democracy. They're, they're both horrible. Um, they make you think you're getting off a, a better with, with democracy because uh, they allow you to voice your opinion every so often by casting a vote. Um not that those votes matter, but uh, yeah, the bot thinks so. <laughs> the second robot, Zio Bing, uh, later waxed philosophical, philosophical about the perks of being an American. My Chinese dream is to go to America, it gushed. The Chinese dream is a daydream and a nightmare. Yeah, so is the American dream, buddy. Let me tell you. <laughs> buddy bot. The right-wing bots, which outraged officials in a heavily censored communist country, as if you're not heavily censored in the United States, come on, man, uh, were deleted by the tech, uh, Tencent, 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 maybe, I don't know, after the political outburst, that company said in a statement, yes, Tencent has deleted the two robots from the app, the firm said, the group chatbot services of QQ are provided by an independent third-party supplier. The chatbots chat bots were co-created by Beijing-based Turing Robot Company. You all know about Alan Turing and his test, right? The Turing Robot Company, um, based on algorithms from real text messages and conversations. We here in the chat this chat, the Real Liberty Media chat on Freenode, uh, have our own little AI bot going on. And his per present name, he's been through a few names, his present name is Smartass. Smartass. <laughs> and um, he says some, well, pretty much everything he says is really screwball. But uh, it's learning. It's learning from the chatters. Which is kind of scary, at least in this chat. Uh, there's a lot of the things the chatters say, myself included, <laughs> may, may cause that bot to go a little bit nuts. <laughs> the chatty bots were killed off just a few days after Facebook shut down a pair of other art artificial intelligence robots that invented their own language. Yes, two AI bots invented their own language and spoke together, and uh, you and I could not understand that. I can, I everything else, 
one of the bots dubbed, yeah, which sounds about like an AI bot, dubbed Bob, was caught jabbering on with another robot named Alice. Bob and Alice having a good time together. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, Rome's, uh, Rome's is wondering in the chat. He wonders how safe the crypto hardware wallets are, really are. I, I can't imagine they're any safer than any other wallet that, that you may download and store on your computer. I mean, they're safe while they're offline, but as soon as you plug them in to use them, uh, that safety kind of goes out the window. I, 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 I just don't... Uh, paper wallet's probably still your best bet, but even that... You got to put in your private key, which gives, you know, if that's being taken in the middle, man in the middle attacks. Uh, yeah, I, I, I mean, <laughs> at least with the, the wallets you use on your computer, the software based wallets for cryptocurrencies, you put in your, your private key on your machine. It doesn't go anywhere. It stays there on your computer. Uh, but but on those hardware wallets, that's a whole different story, man. I I, I don't, I don't uh, yeah. I'm, I I think you're actually better off with the software wallets. Um, and, and if you want to take those your personal wallets offline, put put them on a portable drive and unplug that drive. Well, when you're not using it, uh, that, that's that's to me that seems like a, a better bet, a best bet. I I don't know. All right. Huh, AI face recognition. April 23rd, 2019, RT.com. Teen sues Apple for $1 billion. Claims the in-store AI led to his wrongful arrest. You noticing a trend here? Anybody, anybody picking up on a... <laughs> Little a uh, little theme going on. <laughs> a New York college student is suing Apple for one billion dollars. He says the company's secret in-store artificial intelligence incorrectly marked him as a thief, leading to his wrongful arrest. Osaman Ba, eighteen, was arrested at his home in New York late last year on the suspicion of stealing from Apple stores across four states. At the time of one of the alleged incidents in Boston, the student was attending his senior prom in New York. Ba thinks his lost learner's uh, driving permit did not, that did not include a photograph may have been used by the thief as an identification during one of the robberies. Hang on a second. The thief was using identification during a robbery? <laughs> anyway, linking his name to the crimes. He says that Apple's in-store AI then incorrectly associated the video footage of the real thief with his name. <laughs> the student claims an NYPD detective informed him that reviewed CCD footage shows Ba looks nothing like the perpetrator, leading him to believe that it was Apple's own AI technology that mistakenly linked him to the crimes. Apple denies using facial recognition software in its stores. And, as I said, lying liars lie. In a lawsuit filed Monday, Ba said the stress and hardship of traveling to multiple states to respond to the charges has affected his college attendance and thus his grades. Imagine that. <laughs> yes, they lie just like your government lies. No doubt about that. <laughs> oh, God. All right, all right. Enough of the AI at this moment. Let's go on to something a little more fun. Well, fun for us, unless you are living in Mexico. 
Because if you're in Mexico, this probably ain't going to make you happy. From The Guardian, and uh, April 25th. Don't mess with our beers, or cerveza, as the case may be. Outrage in Mexico over motion to ban the sale of cold beer. A lawmaker in Mexico City proposed outlawing the sale of cold beer in a bid to reduce public and underage drinking. I don't think that's going to (laughs) work. Even if you did pass it. Mexico City residents may have to slake their slake. What what kind of word is that? Slake. Let me let me take the quench or satisfy slake. Word of the day for me there. Slake. S l a k e, s l a k e. Quench or satisfy is one thirst. Uh, they may may have to slake their thirsts with warm beer after a local lawmaker introduced a motion on Wednesday to ban the sale of the cold beverage in convenience stores. Well, what about in grocery stores? Can you still go into a grocery store and get it? Ridiculous. Anyway, the motion, met with the incredulity on social media, would modify Mexico City's commerce laws to ban selling beer of beverages of 7% or less alcohol content, which are refrigerated or in different conditions than the ambient temperature. Or in different conditions. Well, maybe they'll just switch to tequila or whiskey or whatever. Anyway, stores would be required to post signs warning patrons of stiff penalties for drinking in public. Public. (laughs) <laughs> Mexico City's ubiquitous, ubiquitous mom and pop stores often sell cold beer in big bottles 40s I'm assuming previously promoted as a family sized and provide plastic cups which people use to consume the product on site the motion's author Lourdes Paz Reyes posited the new rules would rid the city of so-called calarias, C-H-E-L-E-R-I-A-S, calarias, chalarias, I don't know, which sell liters of beer in seedy settings for low prices. Uh, Many, many, (laughs) many Mexicans reacted with ridicule to the prospect of buying warm beer, especially given the frequently high temperatures. The hashtag con las cerveza no, don't mess with our beers, trended on Twitter. It's incredible that our lawmakers think of so many stupidities without previously resolving the true and serious problem in CDMX and all of Mexico, railed one tweet. If they want to disincentivize, it should say, it says disincentive here, Uh, the consumption of alcohol, would it not be preferable to increase the corresponding tax? No, it wouldn't be preferable, asked another tweet. (laughs) No, that is not a good method. Don't raise the tax. Don't ban the sales. Holy crap. What are you people, you people drunk? Anyway, some of the proponents of banning cold beer sales complain that the country is awash in cheap alcohol, which is how it should be and say convenience stores will sell hard liquor of questionable quality for rock bottom prices. Mexico's consumer watchdog has warned 45% of bottled spirits sold in the country are adulterated and it'll only get worse if you ban the sale of cold beer or increase the taxes, you morons. Public drinking poses problems too. The 2018 National Victimization and Public Security Perception Survey found 75.8% of Mexico City residents and 66.4% nationwide listed consuming alcohol in the street as the main source of criminal and antisocial behavior. Huh. 
antisocial. Why is antisocial a problem? I have no problem with being antisocial. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, um, <laughs> so there's that. Oh, man, <laughs> let's try this here. <laughs> Just because we can and we want to. And we will! There you go. Verb, satisfy thirst. Verb, make less active or intense. That's a thing. Uh, cause to heat and crumble and treat by water. Okay. All right. Well, that's, those are the meanings of the word slake, according to uh, Wolfram Alpha. All right. Now, for one of my favorite topics. A topic that I, I talked about many times. I've, I may have covered this article a couple years ago. I don't know. This article is from 2015. It's posted on Mercola, articles.mercola.com. And I love to keep repeating the stuff that's there. Because to me, it, it's, it, it's very important. And hopefully to you. Eleven, and there's many, many more. Eleven amazing health benefits of using baking soda. So here it is, Dr. McCola. You probably have at least one box of baking soda or bag, depending on your purchasing preferences, in your home right now. If you're like many Americans, you might have a box in your pantry for baking, one in your refrigerator to absorb orders, odors, and another under your kitchen sink to use for cleaning. What you might not have considered is that baking soda can be used for health purposes too. So you might want to stash another box in your medicine cabinet. Why or what exactly is baking soda? It is a 100% sodium bicarbonate, which can be used as a leavening agent in baking goods. When mixed with an acid, uh, such as vinegar, baking soda reacts, making bubbles and giving off carbon dioxide gas, which causes dough to rise. Anecdotal reports throughout history suggest that many civilizations used forms of baking soda when making bread. Let me tell you, it works great too. And, and other foods uh, that require rising. It, in its natural form, baking soda is known as Nacolite, N-A-C-N-A-H-C-O-L-I-T, Nacolite, uh, which is part of a natural mineral natron. Natron, which contains large amounts of sodium bicarbonate, has been used since ancient times. And no, you do not need to get an aluminum-free baking soda. You're confusing that with baking powder, as baking soda is already aluminum-free. For instance, the Egyptians used the natron as a soap for cleansing purposes. However, it wasn't until 1846 that Dr. Austin Church and John Dwight began to manufacture and sell the compound we now know today. Redundancies? Yes. We know today as baking soda. By the 1860s, baking soda was featured in published cookbooks, but was still primarily known as a cooking additive. By the 1920s, however... Its versatility was expanded on and by the 1930s. It was widely advertised as a proven medical agent. 11 ways baking soda, you can use baking soda for your health. You could purchase a box of baking soda for under a buck easily. Baking is one of the very least expensive in home remedies to keep on hand. In addition to using it for minor accidents and injuries, Baking soda can become part of your regular hygiene routine. It's a natural deodorant. Yes, it is. Uh, it explains that here. You can use it for insect bites and poison ivy. It's terrific for itches. Um, absolutely. And it also draws out the poisons. You can use it for heartburn, indigestion, ulcer pain. It's terrific for all of those. Let me say... and and. Okay, here he, he talks about it here. Um, dosing is typically a half teaspoon fully dissolved in a half glass of water. I prefer a full teaspoon and a full glass of water. It says taken every two hours, but I, I, I would say just, just once in the morning and you're good to go. 
Um, you, you don't really need to keep on repeating that throughout the day. Although it says here, taken every two hours, um, but not more than uh, seven and uh, seven half teaspoons of 24 hours. I, I suggest one full teaspoon in a glass of water each morning to keep yourself pH balanced and also to help with uh, those heartburn indigestions and ulcer pains. Uh, this should be used as an occasional, not chronic treatment, he says. However, and be careful not to consume excessive amounts. I can tell you right now, you can use it every day for forever. Well, at least for several years, I, 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 am, I know that this is true. Works for me. Um, you can use it as a foot soak, an exfoliator. Add three tablespoons of baking soda into a tub of warm water. You may want to go a little more than that. Uh, for an invigorating foot soak, you can scrub your feet with a baking soda paste for ex additional exfoliation. A paste made from three parts baking soda combined with one part water can be used in ex as an exfoliator for your face. Make your face nice and shiny and body too. It's natural, inexpensive, and gentle enough to use every day. Baking soda and apple cider make a wonderful spa-like bath for soaking, which also cleans your tubs and drains while you're at it. Um, hand cleanser. Mix three parts baking soda with one part water to make natural hand cleanser that will scrub away dirt and nat neutralize odors. Um, sunburn remedy. Excellent, excellent. Oh, splintery. I, I missed uh, splinter removal. Uh, splinter removal. Add a teaspoon of baking soda to a small glass of water, then soak the affected area twice a day. Many splinters will just come out on their own after a couple of days of using that treatment. Um, sunburn remedy. Ah. Uh, add a half a cup of baking soda to lukewarm bath water, then soak in the tub for natural relief. When when you when you get out, let your skin dry rather than toweling off excessive baking soda. For extra relief, you can add a mixture of baking soda to water to a cool compress and apply it to the sunburn directly. Enhanced sport performance. Distance runners long have long engaged in the practice, practice known as soda doping or taking baking soda capsules before races to enhance performance, a measure that's thought to work similarly to carbohydrate loading without all the carbs. It's also been shown to improve speed among swimmers. While I don't suggest you try this at home, it's another example of baking soda benefits. Researchers noted, essentially, sodium bicarbonate is a alkali substance that increases the pH of the blood. Uh, this seems to uh, reduce the offset of the acidity produced in the muscles during intense anaerobic exercise that produces lactic acid most quickly and... Uh, what? Oh, such as fast running or swimming. Tooth and gum paste. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Baking soda has a mild abrasive action that helps to remove plaque and polish, clean, and deodorize your teeth. One review da of data from five controlled clinical studies found that toothpaste containing baker soda, baking soda enhanced plaque removal effectiveness of toothbrushing to a significantly greater extent than brushing with a non-baking soda toothpaste. Baking soda also has antibacterial activity and has been found to kill Streptococcus mulans uh, bacteria, a significant contrib contributor to tooth decay. For an incredibly effective tooth and gum paste, use a mixture of six parts baking soda to one part sea salt. Put them in a blender for 30 seconds, then place in a container to use. Wet the tip of your finger and place a small amount of the salt and soda mixture on your gums. Uh, starting with the upper outside gum. Anyway, I'll let you read that part. Let me tell you this. I've been making my own toothpaste for several years now. Using about half and half baking soda 
and, and coconut oil. You mix those together. You add in some mint extract, pure mint extract in there. Um, I think Grammy actually uses, uh, what do you call those, essential oils. Uh, either way, whatever you do, that that, that adds the uh, not only some flavor to the toothpaste, but also uh, helps to add some freshing, freshening to the breath. All right, tooth whitener. A natural way to whiten your teeth is crush one ripe strawberry and mix it with a half a teaspoon of baking soda. Spread the mixture onto your teeth and leave it on for five minutes. Then brush your teeth and rinse. This method should be no, used no more than once a week as excessive use could possibly maybe slightly damage your tooth enamel. And it goes on how to use baking soda as a natural cleanser here. Uh, let me just say, there are tons and tons of uses for baking soda. And I suggest you use it liberally. Not like a liberal, <laughs> but liberally. <laughs> Thanks, Sock. Sock's bot, or half bot, Cyborg Noodle, uh, has explained exactly what slake means there. So uh, thank you for that. All right, we got it, 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 we got it. I'm going to skip that story. All right, we're going to skip that story. Um, well, oh, should we skip this one instead? No, we'll do this one. <laughs> well, we're going to skip the story. I, I think we talked about it in the chat quite extensively. I'm going to give you the link to it because it's going to be in the blog. So I'll give you the link to it, um, which it's terrible. It's horrible. Uh, it's posted on thefreethoughtproject.com. Cops open fire on pickup truck full of children shooting three of them one in the head it is horrible horrible story there's the link i i, I don't really want to go into it here on the show um i put it into the into my list of things to talk about but yeah we talked about it quite a bit in the chat so um and if you're really interested in the nastiness of police that's one of many 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 stories of the horrible things that cops do. Um, I know there's supporters of police out there, and I don't want to mention your name, Hansel, but um, think about the shit they do and the fact that other cops, seeing what the first bad cops did, say nothing. They do nothing. And if they actually do do something, they either get fired or quit because of all the pressure that's applied to them. There are no good cops. Period. End of story. Okay. <laughs> sorry for those of you that like them, but I'm not really sorry, because uh, if, if you're a good cop, you're going to get fired. That, that's all there is to it. You won't be one. If you, if you realize what, what, what they do, you, you won't be one. Okay, this story... Posted on What's Up With That. That's W-A-T-T-S, Up With That. Oxford professor says, Aliens are breeding with humans because of climate change. <laughs> I may have talked about this before and forgot to unmark it. I don't know, but I really get a kick out of this story. Anyway, Dr. Willie Sood, an Oxford professor, has been busy promoting his view that aliens are breeding with humans to produce alien-human hybrids, which have a better chance of surviving the coming climate catastrophe. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> right. Anyway, there's a video here in, in this post, and... Uh, it says here, you might think that in absence of extraordinary evidence, Dr. Chi's ideas are utterly preposterous, but evidence of free assertions are not unusual in the climate science community. Some climate scientists re, uh, demand we accept their model projections without getting hung up about, you know, facts, truth, reality, good data, not, manu not manipulated and manufactured data. Oh, I mean, about the simplistic version of scientific falsifiability, 
uh, we learned as children. They claim their climate expertise is all the evidence you need to accept their lying predictions. But we have here in the RLM chat, the Real Liberty Media chat on Freenode, absolute positive evidence that aliens have been multiplying, have been procreating with humans, breeding with humans. And that proof goes by the name of Gooberzilla. Anyway, I'll put, I'll put the link here in the, in the blog. You'll be able to uh, watch the video of this guy later on. I, I find it hilarious. Uh, not to say that there's not aliens out there doing this, but uh, you never know, you never know. <laughs> All right, and finally, lastly, but certainly not leastly, comes this story that I found easily to read. It's posted on um, Forbidden Truth, Rise of the Indigo.wordpress.com, back on November 3rd, 2014, by some guy named V.Easily2. Hemp and cannabis can save the world. <laughs> the cannabis plant has been used for fiber, food, and medicine throughout thousands of years. It's only since the last century that this plant's prohibition was fraudulently induced upon the world, depriving each of us our own health, wealth, and happiness. Hemp and marijuana, or cannabis, both come from the same plant, cannabis. Hemp is the industrial, uh, is the industrial slash commercial use of cannabis stock and seed for textiles, foods, papers, um, body care products, detergents, plastics, and building materials. M marijuana is the flower's bud. Hey, bud, let's body. Of the plant ingested for medical and uh, fun use, recreational use, um, <laughs> it does, after all, get you high. THC triggers cannabinoid receptors in the brain, and this pro uh, produces a sensation of being stoned. And let me just say, that's just terrific. These receptors are found in the uh, uh, found in parts of the brains linked to pleasure, memory, concentration, and time perception. Well, if you're perceiving time, you're already probably kind of stoned because time doesn't exist. Marijuana does not pose a threat to the general public. Marijuana is a very is very much a danger to the oil companies, alcohol, tobacco industries, a large number of chemical corporations, various big businesses with plenty of dollars and influence uh, have suppressed the truth from the people. The truth is, if marijuana was utilized for its vast array of commercial products, it would create an industrial atomic bomb. Got boom, says Vinny. Entrepreneurs have not been educated on the uh, product potential of pot. The super rich have conspired to spread misinformation, lies, lying liars lie, about the extremely versatile plant that if used properly would ruin their companies. And he goes on through the background showing you all the different things that have happened here. It's a, quite an extensive list of uh, various things that have been used to slander pot, marijuana, hemp, cannabis, whatever name you want to slam on it there. So uh, I suggest you go ahead and take your time and read on through Vidi's old post from five years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Sock Puppet says alien pussy is tighter than fish pussy. Now, I don't know how he knows that. I'm not going to ask how he knows that. But if Sock Puppet says so, I believe it. All right, that's going to wrap it up, folks. Thank you all for tuning in here to Grim Leftovers. I'll be back again next Monday. That would be in June, by the way. Yeah, next Monday, 
uh, for another episode. This is episode 24. Next week will be episode 25. And uh, have yourselves a great week. Uh, too bad. I feel bad for you, those of you that got to go back to work tomorrow, but uh, the price you pay for getting paid, right? All right. Well, I'll talk to you all later. Check the schedule on reallibertymedia.com. There's a little button there. It says pop-up schedule. Look at that. You'll see all the shows. And there's shows every single day of the week right here on reallibertymedia.com. Talk to you all later. Peace.